Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome in to another good day on the wild, wild west. Here she is, all ready to go. Just a couple last quick touches we're doing. I need to be out of here in about the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, away we go. I got everything loaded up. You don't realize how much stuff you have in your, you know, your current truck versus the one that you're gonna start driving. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I think I got it all. And then you start going through the list in your head and you're like, wait, no, I need this and this and this. So like my tools, for example. I've just, I've got, now I've got all my tools in three toolboxes. There's the ranch going by out there. The cows are happy. I'm hoping when I get back in about a week, that winter wheat that we seeded is gonna be up and good. All right, I'll be, I'll be on edge just because um, this is a good truck. This is a really good truck. As I mentioned, I've had it a lot of places, but just going out on your first run of the fall, so much new stuff. I, I've hauled a few loads with this cow trailer that I bought uh, to Idaho. It's done, it's done great. I feel like I kind of know it now. Tires, brakes, all that stuff's good. Did all my inspections on everything. I'm as prepared as I can possibly be, but when you have cattle on, it all is a different story. Because everything's so much more stressful with the live move. side of loading out in the country you run the old gravel roads you just like no no don't shake don't rattle everybody's fine we're going 20 miles an hour keep it together we do okay getting out in the country a little bit you know you gotta you gotta run 10 20 miles of gravel here and there but when you have a not that this is that truck but when you do have a truck that is a highway princess yeah, they get pretty exasperated ah, coming out here. My advice to you, if you have a highway princess and you end up getting off the highway, speed kills, right? So no matter how slow you have to go, just go slow until it's not rough anymore. This, this was a bonus. This is a bonus, man. Hey, he wants to, uh, he wants to load up top here. Is that cool? Yeah, okay. No, I think I'll pull past and then back in there. Yeah. Yeah. They hold a little gravel in here. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. Um, that was Joel. He's the rep. It's gonna be a light load, so. That's okay, less money, but uh, a good test for this truck. Uh, it's kind of a strange thing about having a really nice wet year. Um, a lot of times the grass that you grow doesn't quite pack the nutritional punch, you know, so to speak. So those calves don't grow quite as much. Uh, the load was supposed to be about 58,000 pounds is what they call instructions. <laughs> Back this way, go that way. That appears to be well. We went over a lot of bumps. Things doing all right. Out in the country. They've done a lot of work here. This is pretty awesome. So last time we loaded, this none of this was here. You'd drive down the driveway here and you'd go bomb over the edge down there. You go down the edge and follow that chute. And uh, once you'd spun around, that was where you'd load and then you'd have to pull this big old hill kind of through this loose dirt to get out. So kudos to you guys at the Algren outfit here ah, for uh, bettering your place, you know? That's what we all should be doing, right? Trying to make all of our things a little better all the time. So good work, y'all. Let's set this trailer up. Uh, trucks idling. I hate idling, but we're way out here. We're way out in the country, long ways from anything. 
I've always been anxious about it. even at a fuel island when I'm ever in a spot where I'm like if my truck for some reason didn't start again this would be a bad spot to have it sitting and I know I just preached about this yesterday about how I hate idling I still hate it but in this situation it's like mm, let's just let her go all right we got the bull bar out set up in there that goes up to support this so when the cattle come in and hit it it uh, keeps it from busting got a, another one right here I came in and greased all this stuff real good you pile grease in all your all your hinges so they move nice and easy A spot that we really want to make sure we have plenty of sawdust on these cow trailers is right along this edge because this is where there's a seam and when they get juicy it can drip down on the ones below. I got gotcha. you. Time to load the top compartment. These guys are in all kinds of room. Come on. All right, they're up and in and on, we're out. Out like a trout. Ended up even lighter than we thought. Didn't quite make 50,000 pounds. We're gonna check everything one last time. Put this axle down. But for now, we'll put her down. Ah, uh, wouldn't be Montana without a little. Uh, a little action for y'all. Cattle check time. Check them out. Everybody looking good. Hub check time. Check them out. Make sure they're cool. Brodus Montana. Got a scale house coming up here. We are super light. So no worries there. Shouldn't be any worries. Oh, well, we didn't have to worry about that. They're closed. However, I'm going to take this opportunity to weigh my truck while the scale's closed. They have a window monitor that you can kick in because I just have no idea and I'm dying to see what I weigh here on my, my different axles with this new rig. I'm a little, I'm about 500 pounds heavy on my front axle. I need to slide my plate back. I'm not gonna do it now because I'm so light on my axles behind me that I'm not gonna worry about it until uh, a later date. However, since I stopped there and checked cattle last, I did see I got a flat tire on my trailer. So I'm gonna circle back on into town here. There's a little tire shop right on the side of the road. Let's see if I can coax them into uh, coax them into getting me fixed up. He was standing inside the cage while he was airing the tire up outside. You guys look at him split. You're ever hearing Brada. Powder River Tire. Powder River Tire and Lube. They dropped everything immediately. Boom, jumped right on it. Okie doke, away we go. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty slick. Like 30, 40 minutes maybe, 30 minutes.
fixing to fill up for that price. Write them a check. See that cash price? That's a good cash price for being up here. That'll, uh... <laughs> I caught you. The flashlight was trying to fall off. Things are looking good. The old bike is, uh... The strap job is just right. I finally got my tarp tight. Pretty good set of headlights on the old girl, huh? <laughs> Man, it's nighttime and we are cruising across the 90 out here in South Dakota. On the old 90. I checked my mileage. I did that flatbed load and then I came out and loaded cattle and went on my way. All of that cumulatively, the flatbed load, you know, empty there, lightly loaded back home, and then these cattle from Montana out to Bella Fouche, South Dakota, that was 6.6. .6. But that's that's got to be inflated high from those flatbed numbers. So we'll see when we get into Kansas, we'll have a much better idea when I fuel up tomorrow, kind of where we're at. That'll give us a good, and I've, and I've been rolling. This truck's kind of geared up to roll. Uh, I'm doing 70 right now at just a little over 1,500 RPMs. And that's, that's true right on that speedometer, so. It's faster than I like to go by quite a bit, but this is such a long haul. It's one where you can't totally afford to just drive nice and easy. You know, you got to uh, you got to kind of keep on it, otherwise it'll drag on and on and on and on and on and on like that. So. All right, y'all, it's time for a snooze. We are just north of Salina. I'm all out of hours. Time to. Uh, to play catch up for a little bit here so i'm within my little radius of uh, where i'm going so i'm in good shape we'll get up at daylight here in a couple hours and uh, we'll run these pups in they've been riding good no problems no problems at all truck's been running good knock on wood good wood <laughs> made a little rhyme there <laughs> it's pretty good for 5 30 in the morning This is why, this is why it never works. Hear all that? Uh, you lay back and the truck starts doing this. Soon as that sun cracks the horizon, those cattle start going, where's mom? Where's mother? Mother, you're like, guys, it's that homesick first day in the dorms whatever you want to call it oh hi right. oh he's on this side nowadays let's go shoot there not much wiggling but it's an uphill back you guys uphill backs are the worst 
I'd rather wiggle than uphill back because you just ride your clutch and your truck hops and jumps and skips. So the trick here is you wanna you wanna just stay regular speed until you are just right right to the chute. That way you're not riding your clutch all the way up the hill. So right now I'm just clutch out back and uphill, but you have to push your clutch in just before you hit the chute, otherwise you'll just smash into it, right? So it's a little tricky. Let's see how it goes here. I don't like that. All right, I'm getting changed. I learned my lesson once. That, you know, I gotta put my rubber boots on. Always put your shoes back in your toolbox. One time I was in Nebraska and I left them on the ground and the guy's dog came and grabbed them took off with one of my shoes. We found the dog and the shoe up on top of the silage pile. The dog was just sitting up there eating my shoe. No good. Come on. Quickest way to get calves out is to always just go in with them. If you do it from the side with calves, look at all that sweat. If you do it from the side, climbing up the side and reaching in, it takes forever. The trick is, you get in here and you just gotta get real close up to them. When you initially get in with them, you get as close as you can. This one's gonna be a trouble man. Come on, no. Here's what we're doing for that one. Oh, this one's gonna fight us. This one was down in the nose, and he didn't go out with his group. Come on, take a look. There you go. Ah, good deal. Should be 110. Well, so that's that. Thousand, ended up being 1,085 miles because I came a little shorter route than what uh, everybody else does typically when they come down from Montana. Instead of going down through Wyoming and Colorado and across Kansas, I came across South Dakota and dropped down through Nebraska. Saved about 100 miles. I did make a very rookie, crucial mistake though. I left my window down. Not great. You know why? Flies. Flies. So next and somewhere along the way, I'm dying to try this bike out <laughs> to un untarp it been getting some uh been getting some decent looks from a few folks and uh, i can't wait to <laughs> to untarp it and take it for a spin well, that's kind of fun a little blue paint <laughs> been going for about half a mile now somebody must have sprung a slow leak in a big old jug <laughs> so I got my plan, you guys. I've got my plan. Don't mind my bed back there. I did not sleep very well. Uh, my plan is that um, I'm going to ride this wind north. This is important when you're when you're trying to be efficient, especially with fuel prices being what they are. Profit margins are getting tighter and tighter all the time. I was thinking about going up to I-70 and shooting across to Denver, but it's raging south wind all the way across. If there's wind there, there's definitely going to be wind in Wyoming, uh, which usually is southwest wind there. So I, it's just going to burn more fuel. So instead, I'm going to ride this the same way I came down. I'm going to let this wind push me all the way back up. All right, a little update from the road, y'all. I made her all the way up to I-80 jumped on in York, Nebraska, if you're familiar with that country, and headed west. Crosswind is ridiculous. 
just killing my fuel mileage, killing my flow. Really not a fan of it, pushing me all over the road. Trailers passing by you, pushing over the center line into your lane. I mean, because it's that bad. Um, not worried about blowing over or anything like that. Just, just enough that you're just having to fight and fight. So, uh, I jumped off here at Aurora, Nebraska, and we're just going to head north. I'm just going to keep riding that tailwind. No sense fighting the wind. If you don't have to fight it, don't fight it. Just go with the flow. No, you don't. Get off of there. Nope. <laughs> Not today. Not this morning. That last thing you saw, unfortunately, is a direct result from a small vehicle pulling a trailer that's too heavy for it. They were coming down a hill and uh, those heavy trailers get to kind of leading the, it's like the tail wagging the dog. So just a reminder that uh, it's not a good thing to do. Make sure whatever you're pulling whatever with uh, has enough substantiality to it. Um, we made it to Billings, all right. We're here, it's a little cooler weather, sweatshirt weather here. It's about uh, 100 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. <laughs> but uh, I need to go. I I think I can get a semi into Walmart, which is where I need to go to get a bunch of supplies. However, it's, it's in a lot of traffic and it's not, I don't know that I can get in there. I got in there one time in the middle of the night when nobody was there and it was doable, but time of day, I'm just, I don't think it's going to happen. So I'm parked a few miles away here and uh, I am excited to go <laughs> see how this works. Let's get this hay bike, let's unstrap it, get her put together and go for a spin. There she is. Tell you what, good thing we covered up because we did drive through some rain today. Okay, I got it. <laughs> if this all works, this is gonna be really cool. I'm going to take a couple straps with me because I don't know just how much, I don't know how much stuff we're gonna end up having and I wanna have enough strappage. Check that out. <laughs> this will be good. I think I'm gonna grab a flashlight just for good measure to bring along with me. It's got good lights on it and stuff, but it's quite a long ways uh, where we're going. All right, here we go. Power up. Max speed five. We got 81% battery. My thought is if this thing dies or somehow I expend all the juice, then I guess we got pedals to pedal with. So you're gonna notice in the video that my handlebars are a little crooked. Hope that doesn't bother you. I need to just adjust them a little when I get home or when I get a minute on the road here. But uh, let's rock. So I was at a stoplight waiting to cross and uh, there's a guy on foot there. A little rough, a little rough and tumble type. Although I kind of have that appearance myself. But anyway, I was like, man, busy road, huh? He's like, I used to see it on a weekday. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I guess just, uh, just kind of small town type guy. <laughs> I want to go take some residentials because all that stuff back there, too busy for this little guy. So we're gonna zip around. Hey, you know what else about this? It ain't too bad. Look at them legs. <laughs> hey. It's not the worst thing in the world for a trucker to get out and get some cardio. You know, good to eat healthy and have a fridge with good stuff in it. There's no reason not to, uh, you know, pump them legs a little. Plus, the way these bikes are set up, 
because, well, the more you pedal, the more juice you save. So I'm gonna have a pretty good load on and I'm going quite a ways away. I'll be curious to see how far away it is. So I'm trying to pedal a little more on my way over there. Uh, and then the motor slightly assists me, gives me a little help, but I, I better check. I don't want to bike past where I'm supposed to go. Hang on. Well, we made it. So I don't have a lock for it yet. So I uh, parked it around by the tire guys in the back. And they're like, well, we're not really responsible for it. I'm like, no, no I totally get it, but you know, right here in front of your door where you're working so oh yeah man you got about 40 minutes they were super cool so i'm i'm here so let's get our shopping done and uh get loaded back up see how it goes we got 40 35 minutes <laughs> all right you guys <laughs> uh, we're strapped down. These guys are all gonna think I'm so funny. We're strapped down. I got my, got my water. I got my shop towels. Got my fruits and veggies. All my stuff. <laughs> glad I brought all the straps that I did. Uh, glad this bike has suspension. <laughs> it's you know I come here a lot when I'm trucking, right? And I'm used to just kind of yeah, throw it in, get it, and you wheel your you know, your stuff out to your rig. We're two and a half miles away from the truck. So we will, uh, we'll just do our best. If we sprinkle some items along the way, then I guess we'll have a treasure hunt uh, for later in the video. Hey, we're doing pretty good. So far so good. I think everything's, I think everything's, strapped in and okay we're just gonna go nice and easy guys just like i drive my semi nice and easy we got a nice little downhill hardly using any energy just uh trying to be very cautious and careful i know that's kind of an oxymoron one filming this while i'm driving but uh you know like that you know <laughs> now check it see found a little noodle place give me uh, some noodles for the road All right, I got her back on. I tell you what, this is extremely handy. I'm digging the way this saw is gonna work out. Just have to be careful that I get everything packaged properly. Um, it is heavy. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, I don't know what it officially weighs, but to, you know, you break it down, you gotta use your knees and kind of heft it up there. But once it's on, I'm, uh, what are we going on? 2,500-ish miles right in there. and Everything seemed to be okay. I am gonna have to definitely get a better cover. Maybe I can find like a barbecue cover or something for it. I don't know, some kind of repurposed item, but I'm a fan, you guys. The old hay bike Tyson is going to uh, definitely improve my quality of life. I'm excited for it. Thankful for hay bike for uh, working with me to find a, a good collapsible thing that would uh, have some function and some ability just like that we're ready to go i definitely need to get a better cover y'all that takes way too long way too long
little uh, tale from the old days. I may have shared this before, but driving through Great Falls, Montana. And uh, back when I was a young fella in high school, every Monday night, old rooster would take a load of cattle from uh, this area over to Lewistown. Central Montana, which is 100 and, uh, it was a 150 mile trip, basically, from where we would load the cattle. But uh, he would do that on Monday nights. And then he would come back we would load in the evening and then he'd drive back here to where we're from to uh, to load pigs Tuesday morning and then take those to Sioux Falls. And once I got old enough to, you know, competently drive truck with dad, uh, I would get out of football practice in the fall, uh, usually about 6.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30, and I would run over to our feedlot and jump in the truck with him, help him load, jump in the truck. He would drive over to Lewistown loaded. Uh, we'd unload cattle there and then um, he would go back and, and sleep. You know, we get unloaded by, oh, it seemed like it was about 10 o'clock or so in the evening. And then I would drive home so he could sleep on the ride back. We'd get home at, you know, one in the morning and I'd go to sleep and get up for school the next day. and. He'd go to sleep and get up and haul a load the next day. But those were important times for me. Those were good developmental important times. Um, and it really, you know, caused me to feel like I was really important and pulling my weight and, uh, you know, being helpful. But I was reminded of it because of these traffic lights were flashing yellow. And every time we'd roll through here, I'd be so worried about traffic lights and stopping and going and driving through the city at, you know, 15 years old in the semi. And when I'd come through town late enough, these lights would all be flashing and we'd just roll on through.